So I'm Scott Carney, I'm an investigative journalist, and I did a story for Wired magazine uh, about land mafia in Bangalore. And this is a story that I've been looking over for the last three years, uh, after I had seen reports in some newspapers about murders of realtors in the city. And I wanted to just lead you through some of the characters of the story that we didn't really quite have space to bring out into, into the piece in, that was in the magazine. First, you, you see a photo of uh, just some graffiti in the city where it says land mafia, crimes, traffic, and there's a sort of a political party uh, slogan next to it. I mean, this is just to give you an idea. This is the writing on the wall, quite literally. Uh, it's a problem which really extends right through Bangalore. It's in the public discourse. Everyone knows about the land mafia. Uh, and you know everyone has stories about people who were beaten up or, or had seen something like this happen. And everyone complains that there's no transparency in land deals. Uh, so this is very much the writing on, on the wall. Other things that show up on the walls are, are declarations of who owns particular pieces of property. And here's a couple photos of, uh, that say things like, this property is not for sale, belongs to JSR Raju, or, or you know, any other number of names that, that show up. And the reason they do this is when land isn't developed, uh, Indian law right now allows people to come in and sit down on that land and more or less just uh, squat it and take it over if they're there for a certain number of years it belongs to them. And since real estate is one of the major uh, things that people invest in in India, uh, squatters are actually a weapon of the land mafia. And you know, where I opened up the story with this piece of farmland by the airport, uh, which was taken over by goons, uh, the legitimate owner had you know, sort of had a farmhouse there. And on the side of the farmhouse, it said, uh, this land belongs to Chabria Janwani. What the goons did is they came over and just uh, painted over that sign to sort of show that Chabria Janwani is not the owner and they were going to manufacture a legal dispute. And once things go into the courts, the entire system breaks down. Uh, courts can take 15 to 20 years to, to mediate a land dispute and it doesn't even matter if the claim is legitimate or not, if they get there, it is pretty much ruined. Um, it can take so long that uh, to get your money out of that investment that it makes more sense to play ball with the, uh, the crime figures. And now you'll see a photo of this you know, dapper looking bald gentleman. His name is Agni Sridhar. He is one of the original uh, mafia dons in the city. Uh, in the 90s he had uh, killed a, a, a sort of one of the, the largest dons in the city and, and, and took over a lot of the land rackets. Now, he's now a reformed don and runs a newspaper called Agni Patrika, which means fire newspaper. And he is a sort of a noted activist. He's very leftist in his leanings and, and contributes a lot of money to uh, leftist political campaigns. Uh, he was also an associate of Matapa Rai. Now, when I met him, he's quite, a, a, quite an interesting man to speak with. He still acknowledges that he makes most of his money off of real estate. And before I actually went up to meet him, he had a, was sitting in a meeting with one of the most well-known builders in, in the city, uh, the, the chairman or maybe president of a company called Embassy Builders. That, that owns many, many IT parks in the city, uh, is, a, is a landlord to Microsoft and to Dell and, and to some very big name companies. And he was just having a meeting with them about land deals. And when I asked him about it, he just sort of smiled and says, you know, I'm a man who knows a lot about, uh, about Bangalore. Now, when I'm downstairs uh, waiting for him, I meet this other man, and he's a gentleman with dark sunglasses. And his name is Lokesh Mulama. And malama means medicine. And as in, if you've got a problem, Lokesh is the medicine. And, and he deals primarily in land deals. And while we're speaking, he tells me about a, a number of murders that he'd committed in the 80s and 90s. And he laments the fact that these days, guns are, have entered into the, 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 into the scene. And that he 
is just sort of aghast at the level of violence in Bangalore. And I, I asked him if he had any weapons with him. And he said, yeah, sure I do. And he opened up the trunk of his car and there were like these, I don't know, uh, that looks like 10 or 15 swords and knives that he keeps with him at all times just in case he has to go murder someone or more likely intimidate them uh, off the land. And note, this is with Agni Sridhar, the reformed Don, sitting upstairs the whole time. So, you know, the collusion between these, the, the powers of builders and this local muscle is just very much in your face right there on the street. And now that's where we come to Matapa Rai himself, who is probably the most powerful person in land deals in Bangalore uh, right now. He's worth several billion dollars, and when you come up to his estate, he's surrounded by uh, guards who have sawed off shotguns, uh, who are you know, aiming to protect uh, his mansion and him. Uh, he's been shot five times uh, in, a, in a sort of while he was up for charges of extortion. Uh, a, uh, a man raid, dressed as a lawyer came in and, and shot him while he was in the courtroom. Uh, that the assassin, or the attempted assassin, uh, didn't live too much longer after that attempt. Next day they brought me to the court. The court, somebody shot me. Uh, he shot me. Uh -huh. Five bullets. Right. That is not a Indian pistol. Uh -huh. U.S. Army pistol. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The four five, the bullet size is this much. Five bullet in the point blank. One is entered here, passed through. Oh my God. Entered here, passed through, stopped here. Two years I was bedridden. In, in, in bed for two years? Yeah. In, but now you're fine. You can now walk. I'm perfect. Wow. Now I can run, I can jump, I can dance. I can dance. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's actually a very nice man to meet. He's, he's very jovial and, and, and actually sort of an entertaining guy, fun-loving, and you really would never want to cross him. Normally, the, all the hotel people are uh, giving the money to those people, mm -hmm. gundas. Protection money. <coughs> right. Protection money. I, not, I didn't agree. Mm -hmm. I didn't give. But they, afterwards, uh, they all killed. You killed them? No. Huh? Nothing. No, no, he killed them. They all got killed. They were killed with my support, maybe. With your support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that was in the 80s, yeah? The, I think my, my, my timeline is a little... See, after, uh, after all uh, elim eliminate, mm -hmm. public uh, told I am the dawn. The way I understand it, and the way most people talk about it, is he isn't involved in in outright violence all that much anymore because his name alone is enough to scare people off. Now, a lot of people will connect small incidences of violence and extortion to him and uh, there are many, many allegations of murders and rowdies and, and, uh, and sort of thugs connected to him. And you know, the sort of the evidence on the ground is that he's a, a pretty bad man, but he has beaten all of the charges in the Indian courts. Uh, now. That's where we come to the Lok Ayukta, who's this man, Santosh Hegde, uh, who's just a, a, a retired Supreme Court Justice in Bangalore. And what he has done is, or what his position is, is the leader of the anti-corruption squad in, in Bangalore. And he investigates instances of people taking bribes, uh, all government officials usually, uh, and any sort of uh, corruption within the system. And he's a very busy man. He busts at least one person a day, and he has uh, accumulated almost a billion dollars worth of illegal assets. They uh, uh, take money from others as extortion money. Right. They threaten them. Mm -hmm. Your life is in danger if you don't do this. If you don't sell this property to me or my agent or somebody whom I want you to sell it to, right. then take it for granted you will not see the daylight tomorrow. When I spoke to Mathapa Rai the other day, mm -hmm. he said, yeah, I can get you a clear, a clear title to anything very quickly, right, you know, and I can just go, you know, because I have the best lawyers, he says, that, uh, that I... That his, his best lawyers are maybe in the form of uh, the best weapon that he has. Unfortunately, he is unable to uh, prosecute any of these people because the, the parameters of his position 
is that he has to report to senior levels of the government in order to uh, arrange any of his prosecutions. And since a lot of the senior members of the government are taking bribes in the first place, they don't want to give him the power to prosecute themselves. So it's, it's a lot like asking the fox for the keys to the hen house. You know, it, 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 he, he doesn't have a shot, really. In the meantime, m people like Mathapa Rai and, uh, and, and uh, Agni Sridhar and whoever else in the city has pretty much a free reign uh, on, on, on the city to control the justice system and ultimately make huge profits off of the uh, booming real estate.